Gamer Poet strives to create the most informative and easy to navigate tutorials available, driven by viewer feedback and contribution. What some would do in multiple videos, we do in one. Since the videos are packed full of so much information, a lot of which the general viewer may not even care to know, navigation is provided to accommodate the individual as much as possible. Navigation is appropriately labeled within the sidebar via annotations to each major section. Occasionally, if and when it's needed, a sliding tray will drop down from the top right of the user interface. This has been implemented to allow viewers to skip over information that does not pertain to them in a progressive manner without having to check the video description or without having to guess while dragging on the timeline. However, the video description does provide navigation to every section of the tutorial step by step and I recommend that it be utilized on subsequent viewings. Finally, video platforms such as YouTube are subject to change. The GamerPoet's video interface has been organized in a way that hopes to weather future amendments within the platform. Though, the older this video gets, the more potential there is for the annotations to be hindered. Created by Sir Garnon, the Skyrim Performance Monitor is a utility used for tracking Skyrim's system resource usage. The Performance Monitor monitors system RAM, VRAM, GPU, GPU temperature, disk input-output operations, CPU, threads, and frames per second. You can even save and replay past sessions to compare different configurations. The monitor also provides features such as the ability to pause monitoring in-game and to create screenshots that include the performance overlay. You can use SPM not only with Skyrim, but with Oblivion, Morrowind, Fallout 3, and Fallout New Vegas, simply by changing the file pass during setup. If your goal is to have a highly modified game while retaining stability and performance, this is a must-have tool for the modder's utility belt. From all of us at Gamer Poets, a big thank you to Sir Garnon. While you can absolutely play through your entire character's existence with SPM running, I personally recommend that you only use it when testing performance on alternate save files. Microsoft.NET Framework 4.0 is necessary for SPM to work with the Windows XP operating system. Microsoft.NET Framework 4.5 is necessary for SPM to work with the Windows 7, 8, and 10 operating systems. While the link to SlimDX is provided, it is recommended to only install the SlimDX version that comes prepackaged with SPM. Navigate to nexusmods.com slash Skyrim slash mods slash 6491. Open files. Locate the most recent main files version. Select the blue Download Manually hyperlink. By default, your PC will download the Skyrim Performance Monitor to your Downloads folder. First, if you have an older version of SPM installed and wish to upgrade, you will need to completely uninstall the old version for the new one to work correctly. Unpack the contents of the Skyrim Performance Monitor archive. If you already have SlimDXRuntime.net 2.0 installed on your system, you should skip this step. Double-click on SlimDXRuntime.net 2.0 January 2012.msi. If you receive a user account control warning window, select Yes. At the main setup window, activate the License Agreement checkbox. Select Install. Again, if you receive a user account control warning window, select Yes. Select Finish when SlimDX is installed. Double-click the setup.exe that came with the archive. At the main Installer Shield Wizard window, select Next. At the Destination Folder window, select the Change button and install SPM anywhere that you like. For purposes of keeping the Skyrim utilities together, I would recommend navigating to Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Skyrim. Create a new folder, name the folder Skyrim Performance Monitor, and install SPM here. When you have chosen the destination, select Next. Select Install. If you receive a user account control warning window, select Yes. Allow the Skyrim Performance Monitor to be installed and then select Finish. A shortcut to the application will automatically be placed on your desktop. Launch the Skyrim Performance Monitor. Select the Setup button at the bottom right of the interface. The Primary Video Card tab. All users, select your primary gaming video card from the drop-down menu. Single GPU users. If there is only one option due to only having a single discrete gaming video card, simply select it from the drop-down list. 
SLI, and Crossfire users. If you have an SLI or Crossfire setup, select the first card at the top. However, either GPU should work the same. By selecting a specific card in this setup, you are not forcing one to work instead of the other. What you are doing is simply allowing SPM to display the data from it. Multi-GPU users. If you have more than one card installed, but are only using a single card for gaming, you need to select whichever one Skyrim uses. The Miscellaneous Settings tab. ENB and EN Boost users only activate the checkboxes for Attempt Support for Custom D3D9.DLL and Combine Test 5 and ENB Host System RAM. The File Pass tab. Non Mod Organizer users should skip to the next subsection of this tutorial. Mod Organizer users. To the right of the Skyrim Any File Path, select Search. Navigate to Mod Organizer's version of the game's Any Files. If following Gamer Poets tutorials, they will be located in Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Skyrim, Mod Organizer, Profiles. And from here, select the folder with the profile name that you will be playing with. Double click on either the Skyrim Any or the Skyrim Prefs.ini. Next, to the right of the Skyrim Main Program File Path Entry field, select Search. Navigate to Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Skyrim, and double click the Test5.exe. Next, to the right of the Skyrim Launcher File Path Entry field, select Search. Navigate to Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Skyrim, and double click the SKSE Loader.exe. If you do not use the Skyrim script extender, which it is highly recommended that you do, double click the Skyrim Launcher.exe in its place. Select Save at the bottom of the Setup Options window. And the final step close the Skyrim Performance Monitor. Open Mod Organizer. Select the Gears icon at the top to open the Modify Executables window. In the Title field, type Skyrim Performance Monitor. To the right of the Binary field, select the Ellipsis. Navigate to Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Skyrim, Skyrim Performance Monitor, and double click the Performance Monitor.exe. Select Add, select Close, and from now on, you will use the drop down menu next to Run to launch the Skyrim Performance Monitor. Delete the SPM shortcut on your desktop as you will no longer need it. Non Mod Organizer Users. To the right of the Skyrim Any File Path entry field, select Search. Navigate to your any files. If following Gamer Poets tutorials, they will be located in Users, your user account name, Documents, My Games, Skyrim. Double click on either the Skyrim.ini or the Skyrim Prefs.ini. To the right of the Skyrim main program file path, select Search. Navigate to Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Skyrim, and double click the Test5.exe. And finally, to the right of the Skyrim launcher file path, Select Search. Navigate to Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Skyrim, and double click the SKSE Loader.exe. If you do not use the Skyrim Script Extender, which it is highly recommended that you do, double click the Skyrim Launcher.exe in its place. Select Save at the bottom of the Setup Options window. Launch the Skyrim Performance Monitor. Select the Launch Skyrim button at the bottom right of the interface. If the overlay is working, right from the main menu, the counters will appear at the top left of the screen, or whichever corner of the screen you have set them to appear in. While walking around in-game, you will notice that certain counter colors are more visible when overlaid on different in-game colors. Since you will be testing the game in multiple areas, I would suggest choosing colors that allow you to read the information the best under all conditions. The easiest for me to read in all conditions is red, Colors can be changed within the Setup Options window. RAM is the amount of system memory being used in megabytes at any given moment. VRAM is the amount of video memory being used in megabytes at any given moment. Disk I.O. monitors disk input and output speeds in megabytes at any given moment. CPU is the total percentage of your processor that is being used at any given moment. GPU is the percent of your total available VRAM that is being used at any given moment. Threads is the number of threads being used at any given moment. FPS is your current frames per second. And monitoring tells you if monitoring is active or paused.
While playing, keep in mind that anything and everything contributes to the variance in the numbers being displayed. Simply moving the camera or changing the speed in which you are moving will cause variance. Standing still with new objects and NPCs coming in and out of view will cause variance. Open world spaces cause more textures to appear and potentially more scripts to run. Interior locations will generally have better performance as there is less room for objects to occupy. When testing your system's performance, you need to experiment with multiple locations, create different save files, tweak and mod, and then return. The Skyrim Performance Monitor comes equipped with a few hotkeys. The Home key will pause or unpause monitoring. The End key will reset or refresh the counters. The Page Up key will hide or show the counters. The Page Down key will move the counters to the different corners of the screen. Alt plus Tab will exit the game and allow you to view the application at work during your current in-game player position. However, when using Alt Tab, Skyrim may crash to desktop or freeze when trying to re-enter the game screen. This does not occur when using windowed mode. The Graphs tab is the first of the three main sections of the Skyrim Performance Monitor. It is where all the monitoring is displayed and where all options and actions originate. Graph 1. The top graph maps system memory, VRAM, total VRAM, and disk input-output. You can disable any of these options from being mapped within the Setup Options window, and you can also remove the legend itself. Graph 2. The bottom graph maps the percentage of your processor that is being used, VRAM, GPU temperature, threading, and FPS. You can disable any of these options from being mapped within the Setup Options window, and you can also remove the legend itself. The status menu. All of the information at the bottom of the graphs tab for purposes of this tutorial is referred to as the status menu. The status menu has its own major section, which will be covered in detail further on into the guide. Note, you can drag on the outside left and bottom edges of each graph to change the position of the information to better read it if needed. The Any Settings tab is populated after setting the file pass within the Setup Options window. Not every any setting that you have will be displayed. Instead, only settings that are directly related to performance are shown. While the majority of these settings come from the Skyrim any, they can also be retrieved from the Skyrim prefs.ini. Keep in mind that there are many other settings not shown here that can affect your game's performance. The any settings tab consists of three columns, all of which can be organized by double clicking on their headers. The section column displays the title of the any file section in which the performance setting belongs to. The name column is the name of the any file setting directly related to performance. Your value column is the value that you have personally changed the default any setting to. If not set is displayed for a particular value, the vanilla default values are being used. This is due to the settings not physically appearing in the any files or due to the values not being tweaked. Like the Any Settings, the Any Changes tab is populated after setting the file pass within the Setup Options window. What you will see here are detected changes to your Skyrim.ini and Skyrimpress.ini that you have personally made. This can be used to help you remember what tweaks you have applied and to provide reference for further adjustment. The Any Changes tab consists of four columns, all of which can be organized by double-clicking on their headers. The Section column displays the title of the any file section in which a setting's value has been changed. The name column is the name of the any file setting whose value has been changed. Current value column is the value that the any setting is currently set to within your any files. Default value is the value that the any setting was set to when first establishing your any files. The types of changes that are shown. Scenario 1. And any file has the setting IMAX and Isotropy, and the default value is 16, which was established when first launching the game. The current value is now set to 1 in the any file. A change has been made to the default value, thus it is shown here. Scenario 2. There was an any setting established within the default any files, but has been removed. The current value will display a green, not in current, message. In Scenario 3, you have a setting in the current any files which was not a part of the default innies, so the current value will display a yellow, not in default, message. The Status menu is the large section of information and options beneath the actual graphs within the Graphs tab. Status 
displays the current status of SPM. If the status displays waiting for test 5, it means that the test 5 EXE is not an active process in Windows Task Manager. If you are using a different launcher, such as SKSE or Mod Organizer, assure that the file paths are correct within the Setup Options window. CPU Processor displays your CPU specs. Total Memory displays the total amount of system RAM that you have installed and working. Video Card displays the name of your GPU. Total VRAM displays the total amount of VRAM that is available on your system. Samples is the number of data samples that have been taken in the current session. Elapsed time is how much time has passed during the current session. Memory MB, VRAM MB, Disk IO MB, CPU percentage, GPU percentage, GPU temp, threads, and FPS, which were all explained within the in-game counter section of the tutorial, can have their counters individually turned off and on from here by activating or deactivating their checkboxes. The current column displays the current active value for what is being monitored. The minimum column displays the lowest recorded values during the current monitoring session. The average column displays the average recorded values during the current monitoring session and the maximum column displays the highest recorded values during the current monitoring session. The question mark to the right of FPS opens the Skyrim Performance Monitor Debug Information window. This information is shown within the debugging section of the tutorial. Launch Skyrim. Well, launch Skyrim. Skyrim must be launched from here for SPM to work. Screenshot will allow you to take, preview, and name screenshots within SPM. Setup opens the Setup Options window discussed in detail within the Setup Options section of this tutorial. Pause will pause SPM. Reset will reset or refresh SPM. History will open up a window where you can export a session as a log, replay a previous session, or save the current session. You need to establish the Export Viewer File Path within Setup Options to utilize this. The File Pass tab. Skyrim Any File Path is to be set to the file path for either of your Skyrim Any files. The Skyrim Main Programs File Path is to be set to the file path of the test5.exe. The Skyrim Launcher File Path is to be set to the executable in which you launched Skyrim through. In the Export Viewer File Path, this option is for users interested in analyzing the raw data collected from the performance logs. You can set this path anywhere that you wish as it is where the history discussed in the Status Menu section will be output to. The Miscellaneous Settings tab. Disable the Bethesda Game Studios startup video. When activated, it will disable the Bethesda logo screen when you first launch the game. This does the same thing as the setting S intro sequence equals a blank value within a Skyrim any file. Minimize Skyrim Performance Monitor on Skyrim Launch. When activated, it will minimize SPM's UI to the toolbar when you launch the game. Display the memory MB, VRAM MB, Disk IO MB, Total VRAM MB graph legend. When activated, will make the top graphs legend within the graphs tab visible. Unchecking this will make the legend, but not the mapping, disappear. Display the CPU percent, GPU percent, GPU temp, threads, FPS graph legend. When activated, will make the bottom graphs legend within the graphs tab visible. Unchecking this will make the legend, but not the mapping, disappear. Display the total VRAM MB graph. When activated, will make the total VRAM MB information within the top graph of the Graphs tab be mapped and visible. Attempt support for custom D3D9.dll must be checked if you are using an EMB preset or EM boost. Not fully supported, but this is the only way to attempt to have SPM work when using EMB, Sweet Effects, the RCRN mod, and other hooking mods. While the in-game counters may still not be visible and potentially the FPS graph will malfunction displaying either a 0 or NA, all other graphs should still work and record the proper information. Because of this, I recommend testing your game thoroughly with all non-DLL mods installed first and then with ENB or these other mods if you are having issues. Enable Safe Mode. Safe Mode is an option which allows SPM to run normally, but with the in-game counters disabled. This option may help when attempting to use SPM with DLL mods. FPS may not be monitored at all with this option activated. 
Use FPS Smoothing. When activated, allows SPM to attempt to match the detected FPS via the monitor's refresh rate. The Skyrim Performance Monitor does not, in any way, control FPS. It simply monitors it. This option may be useful for those who have VSync disabled. Combine Test 5 and EMB Host System RAM. Strictly for EMB users, enable this option if you use EMB. Enable Windowed Mode Cursor Fix is to help those using Windowed Mode who have the sporadic visible cursor issue outside of the Test 5 window. This issue is strictly SPM related. If you are not using Windowed Mode or do not have this issue, leave this checkbox deactivated. Enable Monitor Only Mode. With this activated, the Launch Skyrim button within the status menu will be changed to Monitor Test 5. Instead of SPM working right away, it will wait until Skyrim has been launched and detected to begin monitoring. The Primary Video Card tab. All of the video card information is discussed in detail within the Installation and Setup section. In-Game Counters. Screen Position. Allows you to choose which corner of the screen you would like the counters to appear in. Temperature Scale allows you to choose whether you want temperature to be displayed in Celsius or Fahrenheit. Font Name allows you to select different fonts for the in-game counters. Font Size allows you to select different font sizes for the in-game counters. Bold allows you to make the in-game counter display font bold. Counter Checkboxes The counter checkboxes allow you to activate and deactivate each individual counter from being displayed in-game. Whether or not the checkbox is deactivated, the information will still be recorded. Counter Colors allows you to choose individual colors for each in-game counter. You can choose different colors or the same color for each counter. The Counter Display Position When highlighting a counter, you can select the up or down arrows to the right. This will allow you to change the position in which the highlighted counter occupies regarding the in-game overlay. The In-Game Hotkeys the In-Game Hotkeys tab allows you to remap the default hotkeys. It allows you to disable or enable them altogether, and key combinations are not supported. Application Colors The Application Colors tab allows you to choose different colors for the user interface, as well as the total VRAM MB graph line. Debugging has its own window, accessed via the question mark icon to the right of the FPS counter within the Graphs tab, which provides detailed troubleshooting information. The information that you will find here is more detailed than most will initially imagine and will allow you to record everything that is happening under the hood. Select the information to display. Provides options as to which information you wish to see. Selecting the Copy to Notepad button at the bottom of the window will save all recorded information for the active option to a notepad file. Debug Info lists important troubleshooting messages that are captured while Skyrim is being monitored. Environment Info lists important Windows environment and hardware information. Everything from Microsoft Framework to hardware and operating system and DLL files will be displayed. Setup Options lists all of the configured settings via the Setup Options window. WMI Query provides a detailed list of technical information regarding your GPU. Everything from refresh rates to driver versions will be displayed. AMD Card Info provides detailed technical information for AMD GPU users, strictly for troubleshooting purposes. Everything is an option that combines all of the debug information into a single list. I highly recommend to those of you out there trying to truly tweak your game as perfectly as possible, utilize this. I'd like to thank all of you for watching this video. Eventually, all of this information and more will be available at GamerPoets.com. The two sources used when creating this tutorial was the official SPM Nexus page and wiki.stepproject.com. Links to both are in the video's description. And for those of you who play Fallout 4, Sir Garnon has made and is working on a version of SPM for FO4. I will provide that link in the description as well. I suggest that you go and check it out. As always, I am Michael of Gamer Poets. Thank you for watching.